Thank God. Good morning, Kanye, everyone. This is Professor Amon Ra, Professor Emeritus, California State University of Long Beach, uh, former city council person for the city of Compton, former board of trustee member for the Compton College and Compton Unified School District. I want to say uh, we appreciate those of you that listen to this presentation tonight honoring uh, what we call Nana Harriet Tubman. Um, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute. We are welcoming uh, my co-host, hopefully he'll check in, Brother Joe Henry. But we want to give special thanks to Brother Rusky Moscone, uh, uh, also known as Rio Moore, and for his brilliance of coming up with this platform for us to speak truth to the people, have community roundtables to discuss critical issues that we face as a people critique the national news and give it an Afrocentric perspective rather than their perspective. And, and operating under the auspices that our oppressor cannot be our teacher and that we don't listen to no one that don't love us. And those are very critical positions that we take. And, you know, we are here every Monday and every Wednesday with the C in, uh, C, Community Education Network, CEN, show hosted by Ross, Rashiki Moscani, and uh, The Conscious Corner hosted by me and uh, Brother Joe Hembre. We want to thank uh, R Brother Rashiki, uh, <laughs> my brother, for having this show, uh, uh, Rashiki Moscani, uh, for having this show. and. Uh, and, and, and providing them the, the platform for us to operate. And as I said, speak truth to first the people, then speak truth to power, and to give the community a platform to express their understanding. We learn, and we learn from each other, we teach each other. And that's the beautiful thing about this platform, to give you an opportunity to express your ideas and your concerns and question the presentations. So we thank Brother Rashikani, um, uh, Brother Regal, for putting this show together. And let me get this up. I'm sorry, you know, I've been on dialysis and sometimes things slip, <laughs> you know, so let me get, get, get back to the point. Tonight we're going to discuss uh, the uh, contributions of uh, Harriet Tubman. But before we do that, we say this is Women, Black Women History Month. And in Black Woman History, there's no, probably no woman more iconic than Harriet Tubman. To illustrate that, they built a, um, a district and built a monument in Newark, New Jersey, in a park that they took the uh, monument of Christopher Columbus down and then they put hers up, a uh, monument of her. And, and it, it came through struggle, a resistance from uh, people that, you know, revere um, um, Christopher Columbus. But the masses of people turned out, organized, educated the community, organized, and they went out after years of struggle to get her, her, her monument. Second, we want to recognize a Cal, uh, California, uh, Pomona, the city of Pomona in California, they put up a monument of Harriet Tubman through struggle, through, uh, through, through, through the challenges of recognizing her contribution, not only to freeing people, but giving people the notion that they could be free if they struggle and if they uh, work hard and if they learn. Don't be afraid to liberate yourself. And I, and I think that's a big contribution. But the other one in Boston, they made a monument toward her as well as the Underground Railroad. So these honors are, are, are a recognition of, of a woman, a beautiful woman, a, a strong woman, a woman of liberation and consciousness. Uh, bodacious. She served as a spy in the army. 
And she also aided John Brown by giving him critical information so that he can do his raids. Uh, it's, it's just so much to her. But before we even get to Harriet Tubman, it's very important for us to understand there have been many women that contributed to the liberation and the consciousness uplifting of our people. Maybe Dorothy Heights of the National Negro Women Association. Uh, may it be um, uh, uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, who went to Daytona, Florida, with no money, no ed no, no no education, and and built a college. A college is called Bethune Cookman now, but that was that was a black woman with a vision, as well as Harriet Tubman having a vision to be free. You know, I mean, I mean, there were others that tried to escape, but. You know, she didn't believe in, well, first thing, she didn't believe in uh, individual escape, you know, for her to get free. And, and as she said, when she reached, the first time she reached freedom, she was happy and she thanked God and she thanked all those that helped her. And then she said, I'm, I'm, but I'm, 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 then she says she got unhappy because of her family and all the thing, people she knew were back there. And she vowed to go back and help them to get their freedom. And that was one of her motivating perspectives. But at the same time, you know, she uh, was a fearless uh, freedom fighter, a fearless. I mean, we have to put her in the context of uh, Afrocentric. Uh, heroism, not one in which the European or uh, some people who are trying to sanitize the significance, like they'll say she only freed 70, uh, 150 people, 120. They don't know how many uh, uh, because at that time they wouldn't even keep them count. And, uh, but most people attributed that it was way more than that. And that was over three to 500 people that she led to freedom. And how did she do that? Well, once she learned how to get her first freedom, and, and then they passed the freedom uh, the uh, slave act, the uh, runaway slave act, which made it even more dangerous. And what's so beautiful about Harriet that all the time that she ran the railroad, nobody told on her. Nobody snitched on her, as the young people would say. And so therefore that means she was revered by the people. They even began to call her Moses, leading her people to freedom from the clutches of the devil. And she went through brutality on the plantation. She was a nanny and they said if the baby cried, they whipped her. And uh, then they uh, also they said that uh, she uh, was, got hit when one of the uh, irate uh, enslavers was throwing an iron, something iron at another uh, person enslaved, hit her in the head. And she began to recover. And when she recovered, she started to having dreams and premonitions of that God was speaking to her. And so that along with her being brought, uh, you know, introduced to the religion through the African Methodist Episcopal Church, she, she began to be a very spiritual person. Some even said she became a minister. But the point is, is that she believed she had a special relationship, a spiritual relationship, much like Martin Luther King, who was inspired by his religion to do the things that he was doing. And th those religions are not into the prosperity, gospel of prosperity, they went into the gospel of liberation, the gospel of service, and the gospel of familyism, of keeping families together. And so that's, that's a critical perspective that we have. Now we as a people must begin to see black women as, 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 as con contributors and partners and people that, um, Make a, a major role in our in our upbringing and in our uh, um, caretaking and our uh, education. Uh, all of those things, black women have contributed 
and, and been the major focus of it. And so, but when you look at the television, you know, more, Beyonce is more important to young people than Harriet Tubman. And Beyonce ain't, ain't freed nobody. Uh, uh, Rihanna, she ain't freed nobody. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying they don't contribute to educational programs and contribute to uh, uh, civil rights programs and po political agendas uh, when when they can. But the issue is risking your life to sacrifice for others to be free or for others to be developed and 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 and, and, and lifting up the consciousness. Now, I'm not saying that Rihanna, when she took the position with um, on football because of the way they was treating the black quarterback, uh, Tomanek, uh, she uh, she took a position. But then she changed the position and performed for uh, the Super Bowl. But the first time she was boycotting all of that. <clears throat> and but I'm not criticizing her. I mean, people do what they can, but. Harriet Tubman was consistent all the way up to the time that um, she passed, which is in the month, a month of March. Uh, that's consistent with Black Woman Month, uh, so, uh, you know. And some estimate she was born in March, also, um, you know. But the point is, is that those are the critical aspects of, of understanding Black womanism. That's different from uh, uh, the uh, concept of. Uh, the feminist movement or the uh, uh, concept of, uh, of, of, of images that they project on the media about black women. You know, you, you look at some of the things that's on uh, the televisions, you know, that they, uh, <clears throat> they portray them as, you know, either uh, mob bosses, uh, sexual objects, uh, entertainers, but not as liberators. Um, now, the Woman King does a fairly good job of uh, illustrating Black women that fought for liberation on the continent of Africa. I mean, we applaud that, but we're talking about here in America and women that are still, like <clears throat> in Ferguson, I mean, women that emerged with Black Lives Matter, as I said last time. And then, you know, you look at uh, what... Uh, 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 the women are doing in the political arena, the Maxine Waters and the Barbara Lee. Barbara Lee was the only person that voted against America participation in the Iraq war and giving con uh, the president the power to declare war without going through Congress and to, uh, uh, and then uh, 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 hold people in uh, concentration camps or anarchy uh, political prisoners in Guantanamo, Guantanamo Bay. Uh, those, those are those are women that spoke out and took uh, took a hard line position. Now, I'm going all the way back to Barbara Jordan, going all the way back to Shirley Chisholm, first black woman to run for the Democratic nomination. And I'm not saying that they were all uh, without criticism, you know, for some things, but for the for the aspect of black liberation and black development, they were they were a strong activists, and so we appreciate that. And so, what I'm saying is that there needs to be a curriculum in the home and a curriculum in the school that points out our heroes and heroines, not treat black uh, history as just music and song, dance, and uh, and awards that white people give out, you know, Academy Awards and uh, the, uh, all those different awards that they give out, you know, Grammys and all that. Those are white folks rewarding themselves. And the whole concept that <clears throat> they're world champs because they play the World Series and they're playing each other, you know, San Francisco against the Dodgers. And, LA and then they say, oh, we were world champs. How are you world champs and you didn't play the world? You know what I mean? But that I mean they they promote that, that that concept. And the same thing with promoting what's beautiful. Beautiful is your physical object. That's why you had some people go down to Mexico that were killed and some wounded 
want to get um, their body redone. You know, uh, you know. I, I mean, you, you look at black some some black women. Uh, see, the model of beauty is their hair, coloring their hair yellow. Uh, coloring, I'm not saying that some women who have health problems like Gina. Um, of, of um, and the brother that slapped uh, uh, Chris Rock, uh, you know, his wife, and, and that, that they don't have the right to wear wigs and different colors. That's different. You know, that's, you know, that's different when you have a biological issue. What I'm saying is that there are people that change, alter their looks, alter what they're about for the whole purpose of emulating white women as the standard of beauty. You know, I mean, this, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know, you know, you, you, you look at uh, uh, the uh, psychologist that did the doll test um, and they let the black kids pick out the doll and they put a black doll up and a white doll and they, most of them went to the white doll because that's a subliminal seduction. You have black men looking for, well, well, that, that goes back in history also. Uh, you were rewarded if a white woman chose you and you were enslaved to be her special uh, slave and ended up you being her body warmer or she fall in love with you and she protect you or you provided so much uh, personal um, joy. They protect you. The same thing with a sister who uh, who satisfies enslaver, and so he tries to keep from selling her or, uh, or enjoying her company and things of this nature. That, that's it. But what I'm talking about is using white women as a standard of beauty, and this is what Malcolm was saying. He taught you to hate your nose, to hate your lips. To hate your hair, to hate your feet, and from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head, you discourage how you look and how and what you're about. This is Malcolm. He said, "Who taught you that?" You know, and 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 th these are the things that when we think about her, Tudman, you think about the beauty of her character, the strength of her character. You know, it, it's not about a physical thing; it's about uh, what she's about. That's why. Some women say, well, how does sister get married who's overweight, don't look half as fine as me, and I ain't married? Because she was a woman that this person, she was able to provide the peace, the harmony, and the care for the person that married her. And he married her for that. He didn't marry her for uh, the standard of beauty that uh, you think that people you got some women fan out so long, you know, you wonder how they use the bathroom, how they wipe themselves. I mean, that's rough. You know, I mean, why would you want fingernails uh, long like a bangdale tiger? I mean, that don't even make sense. And so, uh, you know, we, we have to reach back in history and get substantive women that contribute, uh, uh, that, that contribute, but also possess a liberation consciousness and an appreciation of the black man, not just because of his uh, sexual problems or because of his economic status, but because of his character, you know, what he's about, and that he's principled, that he's ethical, that he's committed, that he means what he says and say what he means. That's, that's the challenge that, that, that we have. And that's why we look and we try to hold up a Harriet Tubman as a role model for women to emulate from the standpoint of how she thought. She didn't think that her freedom, when she got free, the whole world was free. She recognized that there were black people back then because of all the beatings she went through, all the treachery, selling her family, selling uh, you know, her, her, her mother and father, and then breaking up their, 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 their family, and all the torture that goes with making a human being a slave. It was, you, you can't just talk a person or just pick them up on the continent of Africa and then bring them over here and say, you slave, so behave. 
No, you had to beat them, beat their will out of them, scare them, punish them by torturing others in front of them, by poisoning the elders that couldn't work, by punishing the kids as soon as, you know, teaching them at, at the ages of three and four, them seasoning them to be enslaved. And you watching this, and you're seeing roaches run free, and you're seeing rats run free, and you're seeing animals run free, and here you are in chains, you know? You say, it's something wrong here. Even though the Caucasian trying to get you to have a diminished capacity and break your will to, 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 to run for freedom, and there was COVID thing about this. And they passed laws. Everybody talking about these laws about abortion. What about they passed laws about enslaving people? They passed congressional laws for internment camps. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know how people be shocked. You know, I don't know how they can take the rights of women. How, what, the same way they took the rights of black people in the, in, 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 from 1619. All the way, uh, you know, I mean, this is the type of mentality that we have. Everybody's talking about how crazy Trump is. He's just being American. That's what, you know, he's just married. And as Bob, Dr. Bobby Wright said, and uh, uh, Dr. Naeem Akbar said, these white folks believe in democratic insanity. What do you mean by democratic insanity? If the majority vote for it, it's the same. So if the majority vote that we should, Enslaved people, that's saying, that's not genocide, that's not the um, anti-human activity. Uh, anything that they feel that the majority, and now they're constructed where if the majority doesn't support the cultism of white racism, the culture of white racism, they, they have it structured where a minority group can come in and do it. And that's what they mean by the uh, so-called electro electoral college where four states can determine who the president is. And, 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 and you know, do, and most of them are, are, are predominantly white and that's to maintain white power. So my point, getting back to Harriet Tubman, you think about what they were going through, what they were really going through. And then you say, well, you know, how do I, how, how can I complain about my condition and, and don't participate in conscious activities. It don't have to be violent. Just educate people. Just educate your children, people that will listen to you if you can't get others to listen to you and develop your, uh, a role in the struggle. And, and she developed a role of, of, of liberating people and inspiring people by what? Learning nature, learning how to, how to navigate at night by the by the stars and by the uh, by the moon, uh, all kind of uh, uh, perspective. Now, this is a woman with no no education, formal education, one of the best uh, ge geographers uh, for navigating the people from the south all the way up to the north uh, through all kind of issues, through swamps and mountains and. And she had to deal with weather. She had to deal with the weather and all those things and, and, uh, and the climates and the changes. And she learned all of that. You understand? That's the beauty of, of Black women who make a way out of no way. I mean, how are you going to feed six kids with, on welfare? And, 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 and you know, how are you going to clothe them, feed them, and encourage them to go to school? And see, they're not going to take um, a mother who successfully, even though she didn't get an education, she had 12 kids and all of them got college degrees. You're not going to hear them talk about her on TV and, uh, and the father, or even if she was a single mother and did it. They're not going to talk about the mothers that adopted kids. You know, Harry Tubman adopted a child, you know, uh, and because, you know, uh, it, 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 doing what she was doing, you know, it was hard for her to 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 uh, conceive, probably naturally. So she said, "Hey, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna just adopt this girl and name her Minnie." Now, you know, as I said in the beginning, Harriet Tubman's name was our mentor, 
uh, and what they called her Minty Ross. And then she married John uh, Tudman, and that's where uh, the Tudman came from. But the point is, is that she was uh, a conscious a thinking person that we want to plant those seeds into young people about the beauty of, of, of her thinking and her character, her values, her, her morals. And, uh, and, 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 and so th th what you say, well, what, what did that do? Well, it may discourage women from selling their bodies because the majority of women in the world are forced to sell their bodies. Then there were these things about women's circumcision. You know, which is, which is a religious practice. I mean, Jewish people uh, introduce circumcision to Christian people. And so, you know, they, they say it ain't, you ain't clean if you don't have circumcision. Well, now there are religious groups and spiritual groups all around the world that uh, mutilate women's uh, uh, intricate um, int uh, 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 organs. And, and and circumcising they call it women mutilation, and these are this is uh, this is forced on them. Now this is not they come and say, oh well, I'll, I accept your religion and I won't do this. No, this is something that they force on. Women. And these are these are societies. I ain't talking about just a a, a a runaway group. I'm talking about countries that participate in that and, and, and have this as a common practice in, in places like Egypt and uh, some people, uh, some places in Australia and Europe and things of this nature that you don't even hear about. You don't hear about this form of oppression. But it's up to us to dig it up. Like Harry Tubman planted the seed of liberation in people's minds. We have to plant the, the seed of education and research. And you're not going to get this in a biology class. Uh, male-female relationship about women mutilization and circumcision and that is based upon religion and and and, and how many women were hurt and uh, 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 got infected and, and died behind this act. You know, you're not going to get that. You know, this is something we have to dig up and teach, not from the standpoint of ostracizing uh, anybody, but just educating the oppression of women and when men run societies. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Uh, that, that's the critical aspect of it. Uh, Harry Tubman has illustrated Black women liberation practice and thought. And that's what you want to learn about Harry Tubman. Not just uh, that she free slave, but what did she think? How did she come to this conclusion that that uh, freedom was a collective venture? It's not about individual. There are a lot of people that practice um, being comfortable in their oppression. You understand, and 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 so she was. She could. She could. Like I said, she could have uh, just said, I, "I'll just stay up here in Canada." or I'll stay where I'm comfortable, in Pennsylvania, wherever I was. But no, she said, I'm going back. And she risked her life for others. Now, hey, uh, I'm not saying people have to risk their lives if they don't want to. But I'm just trying to use her as an example of being committed to an activity that helped liberate the people and created a consciousness of liberation for our people that led to the revolts of, of Haiti, that led to the revolt, slave uh, people in slave revolts throughout this country, and led to other forms of liberation and runaway and inspiration by being successful. Successful uh, was, 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 was a challenge that had in Tillman. So in this Black Woman's Month, we look at the black women, African women, African American women, Afrocentric women. Our, our goal is, is to educate people to see them as not just uh, sexual objects, not just for to be bossed and told what to do, not for uh, domestic violence, not for 
uh, that you that this is a man's world, and you know you uh, you do what I say uh, or face consequences. You know, most men kill their spouses, uh, and uh, many men who are married, and you know you see it on uh, the news, and you see it statistically. The domestic violence and brutality toward women is, is, a, is, is a common practice in this country. Uh, you know, when you go back up into the, uh, uh, the, the wilderness, you know, people administer their own justice. And if you want to judge a society, you see how it treats its women. And the key to understanding Black relationships is how they treat each other. Are they marrying each other? Are they caring for each other? Are they supportive of each other? And so right now, you got, as I said, more young people wanting to be a Beyonce or Rihanna or, or, or somebody like that versus a, a, a Harriet Tubman, a liberator. Because that means that you got to train, train your kids, educate your kids to uh, our history, our culture, and our value system. So we want to uh, uh, throw it out to get some feedback from what has been said. Brother Machine, do you have any comment? You there, Brother Machine? What about you, Linda? Are you there? Y'all on mute. Yes, I, I'm. I'm here. I'm here. I was just listening, and you're on point. And just. I should say thank you just for continuing, especially talking about Harriet Tubman. Because I, I, one thing I did not realize, I agree. First of all, everything you said, and I appreciate you saying this about women, I just never knew that she had adopted a child. Wow. Yeah. So thank you for just informing me mm -hmm. and uplifting women. Well, not only that, um, 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 Fanny Lou Hamer had to adopt children because they beat her so bad she couldn't have no more children. And she began to adopt children. So, and that, that's a beautiful thing. You know, that's the, that's the womanism and the mothers. You know, well, I told y'all last time about Black History Month that water is essential to a Black woman and, and a, 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 a resource for Black women with regards to so many things that they do. Even when you're born, you're born in, in, in water in the woman's stomach. I mean, I mean, you survive. And then then in for in order for you to be born, she, you know, the water has to break. And then you come out, and the first thing they want to do is keep is, is clean you. Now, women who couldn't get the water, they lick their babies clean and and and, and things of this nature, but they found a way to use the moisture in their tongues and in their mouths and Saliva so uh, to 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 get the work, the babies clean and then the uh, you know uh, things of this nature. Then they found plants with water in them and things of this nature. And then at the same time, even today, in today's struggle, women uh, use water more than anyone with regards to baths, with regards to cleaning kids, with regards to cooking, with regards to uh, health issues and and things of this nature. And you know, water the, the planet is 70% uh, water, and they called it what? Mother Earth. <laughs> you know what I'm I mean, so water is very essential to, to, to the consciousness, but at the same time, uh, uh, we, we, we got to begin to break nature down and break life down, as, as Brother uh, uh, Hendrick saying, Brother uh, Rashiki, and also uh, 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 Brother... Uh, uh, Jabal, who wrote the book, uh, A Conspiracy of Science. Mashinda, are you back on yet? What about you, Rashiki? Yes. Um, first of all, Professor Ra, yeah. I want to thank you for being dedicated to, to our cause here in our, our platform because a lot of this was inspired by you, uh, Neely Fuller, you know, brothers like you guys that for me to continue 
doing what you guys have, have started. So I wanted to join in and, and bring something to the table. So that's how we got this platform started. I started it with a buddy of mine, but he wasn't able to follow through. So I had to keep it going. And then with you coming on, Brother Machinda, then the Brother Doctor, uh, Hembrick, you know, it just, it, it, it became a, you know, sister making it happen, you know, and a few other people. It just, it's something that's, I think that's real good. Um, I think a lot of people are starting to appreciate it. And it's just, you know, it, it just, it brings me back to black study courses uh, when we used to meet and have black think tanks. And it's just a, a lifestyle that I think that we need to adopt, uh, constantly educating and getting educated. So I just appreciate you and, and all the other people that participate to, and, to and, make this happen. Yeah, and women, women is essential that she taught me and taught uh, a, a brother Neely Fuller, who's Francis Press Wellsane. He understands it contributed to his consciousness and he contributed to hers too. But Francis is the one that uplifted Neely Fuller and really introduced Neely Fuller to the academic world uh, from the standpoint of his, uh, his writings. And his, as a matter of fact, he's the one that gave her the thought about what racism was. You know, If you listen to her tape, she gave a lot of credit to him, not psychologists and not uh, scholars, but she gave credit to Neely Fuller. And she was washing dishes one day and she uh, noticed that it was real quiet. And there was, and she wanted to know why and it was about ball games. And then she developed a theory about the big balls, round balls belong to black men, and the little white balls belong to white people. And that's why they build guns and the cigarette and the cigar. And she, she really went into it, but she said that she was talking to Neely, and he said she, he's the one that told her that racism was a global dynamic and about genetic annihilation uh, uh, from that standpoint. So I, I'm just contributing to Black Women Month and, uh, as a part of even raising up the theories of racism. But go ahead. Yeah, so when it comes to Harriet Tubman, I just see a, a pillar of strength. And I, I I don't know what other word to describe her. It's just ultimate strength and will and desire. Just, just awesome for a woman to uh lead many people to freedom from uh that, that slave the slave situation, man. And uh but I don't think we can imagine what those people went through. We just hear about it, and you know, just just much appreciation for her and people yeah. like her. Yeah, she had a she had a beautiful hearing heart, as some people would say, and write about her hearing heart. And you know, uh, Harriet, uh, 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 amazing fearlessness. You know how much you know the consequences. The bounties that they put out on her, and nobody took the money and told or set her up. I mean, and she believed so much in God, you know, that when she got hit in the head, she started having these premonitions, and she thought they were premonitions from God, and that gave her inspiration to continue the struggle. I mean, that's profound, man. You know, no matter where you get the strength from, through uh, divine intervention, and or just physical development or mental development. And that, that was critical, you know, from that standpoint. You know, so when we think about uh, where we go from here, we have to develop better male-female relationship. That's critical. And we got to focus on that. And Black Women's Month is when we focus on honoring and appreciating the role of women in our lives, in our struggle, and in our momentum toward liberation as, as key figures. Second, the importance of maintaining a positive relationship with a woman. 
You know, most, most people, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm guilty of it as anybody else coming up young. You know, uh, you know, you, you think that you can have 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 sex with the whole or all the women in the world. You know, you be looking, you know, you leave one, you go to another and all of that until you grow and you, you get conscious and you say, hey, I, I can't see women as sexual. I have to see them as goddess and liberators and women that um, are, are the mothers of our children, women mothers, uh, you know, even if they're not your biological mother, you know, if you see a woman with children, you know, you, you honor her, you respect her, because she's a, she's a caretaker, you know? And, and, and I mean, it's just so many things that um, we were not taught in the home or in school about the importance of our relationships with each other. And the most profound relationship is women and men, male-female relationship. Now, I ain't knocking gay people and people that want to have same sex and fall in love with the same sex. Uh, you can do that. That's on you. But we know that you can't uh, procreate without um, man and woman. And second, that in order for us to move forward, rather you, even if you uh, into a personal relationship with same sex, you still have to honor the other person of the other sex. In other words, if you're a man and you're involved with another man, that don't mean you hate women or discredit them for their role. You understand? I mean, you, you can stay with your man if you're a man, but you may remember when two men get together, you're taking away two men from being married and having children with a woman. And when you tap two women together, you're taking away a woman from having children uh, with a man. So that that's very important. Procreation. Like, like, like I'm gonna give you a statistic. Uh, out of all the ethnic minorities in this country, the only group that have not grown in population is the African Americans. Everybody else, population has increased. You understand? At one time, we were the major minority group from the standpoint. Now, Latinos, Asians, uh, Asian uh, Americans, uh, Asians, uh, and other ethnic groups are, 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 are outpopulating us. And uh, somehow we got to get back on track that children are not a burden, but they are a resource for our. our uh, for our future and a resource as far as contributing to the uh, 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 the family wealth of the, of the family, you know, uh, as, as going on, getting jobs, getting educated, and things of this nature. You see, you know, me and my parents didn't get educated, but they saw that we did. Now we have to make sure we get our children to get educated. But you look around, Many people, children, have chosen different directions from what the what, what what we need, and that's because the consciousness was not taught of and uh, uh, teaching them first to love you more than they love you. Uh, and and the, as some biblical text say, "You may be in the world, but don't be of the world." And as I taught my kids. You don't want the world to change you. You want to change the world. You want the world to be like you. You don't want to be like the world because there's so much deviance and, 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 and degradation out there that you can come from a good family and participate in devilish activity. You understand? Uh, you want them to be realize that they're behind enemy lines. And the consequences, if they get caught, Doing anything, it don't even have to be revolutionary or revolt or, or, or demonstrations. Just anything, you're going to get the blunt of the punishment. Okay, so that, that, that's where that is. Michelle, are you back yet? He's not back yet. Then do you have any more comments? Are you back yet? You're on mute. I don't have any more comments. 
Okay, man. Well, we appreciate hey, you. Hey, I'm back. I'm here, there. I'm, what's going on? <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Yeah. What's yeah, up? Yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's getting cold out here. I had to go outside and make do some things out there and you know, protect the plants and things like that. But I've been listening. I got, well, I couldn't check in while you were, because you had moved to the next person. And I was fumbling with my phone, but I was kind of multitasking at the same time. But I listened to a lot of what you were saying, you know, the historical figures. Um, Harriet Tubman, man, you know, just like we were talking about Carter D. Woodson last week, um, you know, I think of all the historical figures in time, it's like I can't even imagine, you know, you know, the things that they were up against, you know, just, you know, I, I guess I can imagine it, but, you know, to put myself in their shoes, man, you know, that's why I give homage to them because of the fact that you take somebody like Harriet Tubman, I think when she was young, you know, she got hit in the head with a weight or something, you know, had brain surgery or something to that effect. You know, I'm saying, you know, having seizures and whatever. I'm saying she was dealing with ailments throughout her life, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, physical ailments based on, I think, I don't know, I think the slave master or somebody hit her in the head with something where back in like, you know, the 1800s, she, you know, we think a brain surgery is something, you know, that's something modern, but supposedly she had went through some kind of brain trauma, you know. So with all of that, you know, because I think of people on the planet that have ailments and, you know, different uh, problems that are going on, that's what keeps me going. You know, I don't try to make no excuses for nothing. If I can, if I can talk, if I can exist, you know, if I can see, if I can hear, if, you know, I have a buddy of mine who's a paraplegic that I was his best man in the wedding. And uh, the guy fell down and injured himself. And just like that, he can't, uh, he can't even feed himself. Can't even, uh, all he can do is ask for help. And so what I'm saying is, uh, so I'm tying that in to people that are disabled. And I even tell him, don't give up. You know, I said, you know, life's a spiritual journey. It's part of it is a major part of it is a spiritual journey. And so you have a contribution still. You can still see and hear and talk. You can, you know, with his wisdom and he can still learn, you know, with all the technology uh, to be able to voice command and, 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 and research and different things and people that come visit him that impart knowledge. But what I'm saying is he's still a positive or a influential member in this world. I, I let him know that instead of him just sitting there dying and feeling depressed and things like that, although he's in that position, but I can... I, you know, so Harriet Tubman, with all that she went through, you know, all that she went through to have the tenacity and the, the desire and the, the fortitude and the intestinal fortitude, man, it just fires me up. You know, just it lets me know that, hey, if, if you know, I probably can't do what she did. You know, you know, like I said, sometimes you heard the saying, you know, you're not even built like that. Most of us in this modern time, we're not even built like that because we're not up against that kind of struggle. We're just carrying the legacy and the struggle that they laid for us. They, they broke open and like I say, she was a, she, she helped uh, transfer slaves to one point to another. And, you know, you know, we, we, we can't even imagine being a part of that. We can talk all day long about that, but then again, don't get me wrong. The, the fallout from all of that up until this point, you know, you know, like you say, the struggle continues. So, we got to tap into that spiritual, uh, uh, you know, access, you know, her nature, acts, you know, that synergistic effect that, you know, transfer that energy that she was about um, during those times. And, 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 and not, you know, we read history, to not just to be reading, but to get empowerment. You know, it empowers you to let you know that, you know, not only that she came before you, but look, look, what, she, look, look what she laid down for you to, to keep marching through. And we still in this battle, you know, and I can go off subject and talk about my experiences yesterday and today with the, the, you know, down here in the South where, you know, racism and all of that is still alive. And, you know, they trying to take the history out of the schools and things like that. We're, you know, the, you know, it's a full court press on black people at this time, you know, or, or it, it, you know, people to, to be able to, uh, to try to, shortstop you in any way necessary so at the end of the day like i say that's what keeps me going you know i appreciate you 
uh, delivering this message. You know, women are powerful. You know, I, like I say, women, women, women. I, I can't even say more about women. Women is, you know, is is not only a piece of the puzzle, puzzle, but uh, man, they they are the puzzle. You know, and and uh, they gave birth to all of us, and so and and so we accept that. And 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 but at the same time, that transfer of power. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, the the level of uh, you know, like I say, the strength that that she exudes, you know. But um, you know, speaking of Rihanna and Beyonce, you know, I get I give out I give a little shout out to them as well. You know, I hear you talking about them. You know, Rihanna, she she she's global. She talks about she deals with the you know the the farmers and the people over in India being pimps, you know, over there and, and protesting. And you know, she she's one of the most followed people on the internet. I think she's like in the fourth or fifth position. She has like a hundred and three million uh, followers or something, which is incredible. I think it's only a few of them ahead of her uh, that has more followers. And if she tweets out something about a protest, man, it grows. Although you might say, hey, you know, hey, with that with that platform, she can do more. Well, she, you know, she deals with climate justice. You know, we, we got a hell of a thing going on with the climate. You know, it, it might be 100 degrees one day and it's 29. It was 29 degrees last night. It's going to be 81 degrees in a few days. Something's going on. You know, something's going on. These weather systems are are, are, are tripping, as I say. So so she speaks on that. You know, of course, Beyonce and her platforms, you know, she's got a, she, they, they have platforms. But again, they're entertainers. And like I say, we all spoke on that before. They only going to, you know, of course, they're only going to go so far. But hopefully with their level of uh, attainment where they're at in life, maybe when they, when they, I guess, get older or retire or whatever, because it's like this, you know, like even our basketball players and different folks, they speak up, but they have the attention of our population and, uh, and, and they're not, you know, they're not putting it on super blast, so to speak. So, you know, you, you know, you can mention LeBron James and we can name all these different folks. They do speak up, but on certain levels, you know, if they, because they won't be able to, you know, they they are owned by the media or the owned by the the sports industries. When I say owned, they are that's who they work for, and so they only can do so much and say so much, you know. And that's that commissioner in basketball. He's a little more liberal, as they say, and he lets them get away with certain things, you know, because he's, you know, he's a modern day. I guess he's a more contemporary guy. But anyway, what I'm saying, can you imagine if Harriet Tubman was here today and, and, and Governor DeSantis was talking the craziness that he's talking and in Florida? Oh, man, all hell would break loose. So, again, I didn't mean to jump out there like that, but I appreciate, you know, you just even bringing it up. You know, you got a level of uh, longevity and in, 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 in information that, that that's very powerful. And I hope a lot of people listen to this podcast tonight. You know, and I'm good. Okay. But you know, two quick things. The according to the story about Harriet Tubman getting hit in the head, the um, the enslaver was throwing an iron pipe or something at another person uh, that was enslaved and hit her, and she began to have these headaches and have these uh, premonitions that she thought dreams that she uh, that she accredited to God. Uh, and became very spiritual along with her Methodist of upbringing, you know, because one of the first churches in this country was the African Episcopal Methodist Church by Henry McNeil and his other brother. There was two of them that, that, because white folks wouldn't let them get uh, communion and drug them out to church, drug them out to church, and so that 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 was that was a key key factor, but. What you're saying is true when it comes down to uh, educating um, our people about the beauty of women today, from Rihanna to Beyonce, what they do, they, they do what they can, you understand? And, and, and we have to appreciate that. And, and you're correct with regards to uh, 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 the followers that Rihanna have and Beyonce. You know, they're very powerful women and they do do a lot of things philanthropically uh, for the black community. And and that's a good thing. And, and But most people follow them for their music and their beauty versus their uh, their, their liberation struggle. But uh, and that's that's the difference between them and Harriet Tubman. 
But the point is, is that everything you say is, is beautiful, and we appreciate you uh, for for that. Uh, Rashi Key, you have anything to say? Just enjoying the commentary. Okay. And we enjoy, and we enjoy you and your efforts to bring the commentary, which is very, very, very crucial to our movement and to our uh, effort to um, to educate and, and and encourage people to have a consciousness. And that's 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 very important. So you can go ahead and tell us what's on Wednesday and what's going on. Okay. Let me show everybody how they can access us if they are interested in coming on and uh, participating. Mm -hmm. okay. Here's the website. And I also want to mention, before I show who's our guest, we have a form here on the website. And all you have to do is sign up. All you need is a email address. And we can start having some, some discussions through the form. We've been on here two years. We only have a few a few topics in, in a post. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage people to start coming on here and, and raising some some of their concerns and their their ideas so we could have a dialogue through the forum here. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at who's the guest here. It's Brother DX. And the topic is Astro Theology, the Bible Codes. And then we have a, a special guest on Thursday. So we got two more shows this week. Mm -hmm. We got Mr. Bobby. And we're going to have a conversation with him. And he's the co-host of the CRSC show. That's Counter Racist Code Show, mm -hmm. which is Neely Fuller Jr. show, which we mm -hmm. spoke of earlier. So that should be very interesting. He's been on twice with us, and we're looking forward to that on Thursday. So that's what we got coming up. Well, that's a blessing. Yes. Well, as you said, we ready to take a pause. Oh, yeah, we're going to take a pause. Yeah. And, a pause for the cause. Yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, we got Brother Rohan Marley coined us on that, and we, we are attempting to get him back on here soon. So. Hopefully that goes through. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. folks. What about you next week, Professor Ra? Mm -hmm. On Monday. I talked to I talked to Barry Thomas. He said that uh Carl Douglas was supposed to call me. Because I, I sent him a picture of me, him, and Johnny Cochran. <laughs> and so that's supposed to motivate him to call me. So I'm waiting on that. Now. Hopefully he'll call me by tomorrow. Yeah, I want to see that, brother. <laughs> I'm gonna send you the picture. Please uh, do. Yeah, me, Johnny Cochran, and him at Johnny's office. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a rich, rich history right there. Yeah. All right, folks. Each one, teach one in Conscious Corner. We will All be right. back on Wednesday. Okay.